Richard D. Wolf is Professor of Economics Emeritus at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst. His educational background includes a BA in History from Harvard College, a MA in Economics from Stanford University, a MA in History as well as a PhD in Economics from Yale. He is a co-founder and contributor of Democracy at Work, a nonprofit organization that promotes democratic workplaces as a key part of a transition to a better economic system. The New York Times Magazine has named him America's most prominent Marxist economist. Okay, um, yeah, this is one of those issues around which a level of, I'll use a technical term, bullshit. There's a level of bullshit around this topic that it makes even the other topics of economics, which suffer from the same problem, look like nothing in comparison. So let's go through it. It has always been true that if you have a monetary system in which the basic money is produced by the government, as, for example, in most modern capitalist societies like the United States or Canada or Europe, the government produces the money. The euro notes you have in your wallet are printed by the government, the, the European government. The dollars in my wallet are printed by the United States and so on. So obviously, the easiest way to control the money system, if you want more money, print more. And if you want less money, burn what you printed last year. It, this is not complicated. So if the job of the government is to manage things by using the money system, this is childishly easy. But the problem has always been that what is childishly easy becomes a temptation for those in power to use it not to manage the economy, but to get themselves out of political difficulty when they have one. And the best example is a government wants to go to war. Okay, how is it going to pay for the war? And the answer could be, well, you could say to your people, a war is something that affects all of us. So all of us must be okay with having a war, otherwise we shouldn't have it. And the way to make that real is to say, we're gonna pay for the war by taxing you, the way we pay for the roads and the way we pay for the schools, we're gonna pay for the war. The problem is if a government wants to have a war, the fastest way to have your people turn against you is to make them pay for the war. So what all governments have done throughout history is to use the power of creating money to pay for the war. So basically what the government does is it prints more money in order to pay for the war. Simple. The problem here is if you let the government print money, it's possible that all that money will be going into the hands of businesses and people who are going to be nervous that with all of this money being pumped into the economy, it may become the case that money loses its value. Or to say the same thing in other ways, all that money will chase goods and services, and with all the money, the prices will be bid up. It's as if, think of it this way, if, if I came into your village and suddenly I distributed money to everybody, you would all then run to the local store and want to get, I don't know, a shirt or an ice cream cone or whatever, but with everybody having more money, if there wasn't enough shirts and ice cream cones, each of you would offer the, the storekeeper a little extra because you have a lot of money, and so the prices would go up. Or to say the same thing in economic language, if you print a lot of money, you have the risk of an inflation, of a rise in prices, and that can disturb how an economy functions. Because governments did this, because they produced horrible inflations over and over again, because of the corrupt use of government money printing capability, the decision was made to not let governments do that, to put a limit on that. And the limit that was found in a capitalist society was to say, if you're going to spend more money than you raise in taxes, 
you're going to have to have a public debt that we can all understand and that we can make sure doesn't get too big so you can't quite do what you want to do freely. So we make governments run a budget deficit. That's all it is. It's a difference between what they spend and what they earn in taxes. And we don't let them print the money in a difference. We make them go through a silly procedure. They issue bonds to pay for the deficit. That is, they borrow the money so that it can spend more than they raise in taxes. Okay, they issue the bonds. But that doesn't get them the money. It just gets them in the bond. They can print the bond. They can't print the money. So we require them to take the bond and sell it to some investor. Somebody has to give them the money for the bond. Someone has to lend them the money. <coughs> and then the private bankers, that's who mostly does it, who lend the government the money for the deficit, are then allowed to take that bond that they've gotten from the government and go to another office of the same government and sell the bond for new money, for newly printed money. For example, in this country, it, the Federal Reserve plays that role. In, in a European countries, it's usually the central bank, the Bank of France, the Bank of England, whatever it is. And so we make the system go through these bizarre steps. In the end, it's the same thing. One part of the government prints the money that they then use to buy the bonds that another part of the government printed. But we hope that by giving the banks and the other investors this crucial role in the middle, it'll hold back the bank, the government from wildly overprinting the money. It, of course, doesn't work because, yes, you have to go through three or four steps but a government that wants to do it does it. So for example, in the aftermath of the 2008 crash, all governments in the world led by the United States have printed mountains of new money and pumped them in as if they were an old king who did it 400 years ago. So we are now faced with a dilemma. We have big deficits being run, not just in Japan, but in Europe, in the United States, all over. And we are monetizing it by printing the money through the central bank. So we are now worried, all of us in the United States, because on the one hand, we need to keep doing this because the economy has not recovered from the crash of 2008. But we are worried because we have added so much money into the economy that the risk of an inflation exploding onto the world economy is very real. And that's where we are. A capitalist system caught in a tremendous contradiction, not knowing where to go, and at this moment putting into office the kinds of economic morons that May in England or Trump in the United States represent. People who haven't even understood any of this and who think they live in a world where they can do all kinds of things with impunity only to learn that they can't.